Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to convert position versus time graphs to velocity versus time graphs. So we know that speed and velocity is simply some of the distance interval per time interval. So if we look at a position versus time graph like this one right here, it looks like in the first three seconds we've traveled six meters in three seconds. And quite literally, we can use the slope of this line, so six divided by three, to go ahead and calculate your speed. Cool. So we know that the slope of, and I'll go ahead and write that. So the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. And keep in mind, velocity will include a direction. Well, the first thing I always do, and this looks like a tricky little position versus time graph, so it looks like distance is measured in meters, time is in seconds. I'm going to split this graph into sections, different parts of where it's like doing different types of motion. So whatever that object is, you can say it's a snail, a human, whatever, walking. Pretty fast snail though, you know. Cool. So it looks like, and then I'm just going to split it into like where the line is curved. So it's either speeding up or slowing down. Here is the constant steady line. And then we have this last little part right here. Perfect. So then what I'm going to do is, so first I split into sections. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to label each section. And I'm going to label it with two things. Both health, what direction, whether the object is moving in a positive or negative direction. And then how is it moving? Is it moving at a constant speed, speeding up, slowing down, or at rest? And I'll just use those little labels for all of this. Perfect. So now let's look at this section. So I know it's starting at zero meters and it's going up to six meters in three seconds. So flat line means it's going at a constant speed, a steady speed. Looks like it's moving in a positive direction. Now that look, let's look at the next part from three to five seconds. So it's still going up. This is a positive slope. Um, object is moving from six to eight. So I think of like a number line. You're moving away from it. Um, and it looks, the line is getting less steep. So the thing that's going down is covering less distance per time interval. Now let's look here. So you were at five seconds um, and you go to seven seconds. So it looks like you're going backwards. So I'm going to say that's a negative direction. And you're going backwards. So one thing I want to look at too is this top point right here. So we know that the slope of the position versus time graph is velocity. Let's go ahead and look at the slope right there. I'm going to draw a tangent line, um, which a tangent line again is just the slope of slope of the graph at one point. So right here, slope of that right there is nothing. So the slope of this right here at this instant, you're going zero meters per second, or you're at rest. You have to, to turn around. You always have to be at rest. It would be cool if you could turn around with, with without stopping, but you have to stop to turn around. It's impossible not to stop. So now let's look at this next portion. So it looks like you go from six meters all the way back to eight meters. So you're moving, or negative eight meters on the number line. So you're moving in a negative direction at a constant speed that's flat. So here from 11 seconds to 18 seconds, you're at negative eight meters the whole entire time. Um, so you're just at rest. And I'm not gonna say a direction because you're not moving either way. Cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, so I'll label each part, like what direction, is I'm going to find the slope of each section. So we know that slope is rise over run. So I'll just go ahead and do it for this little section right here. So I'm going to label two points on your line. So here to do to here. So the slope is rise over run which is up six meters and over three seconds. So that's two meters per second. Cool. This part is curved, so I'm not going to worry about that. We know it's zero meters per second. That's five seconds because you stop when you're turning around. Here curved, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll look at this section right here. So if I draw a big triangle to help me find the slope. So the slope is you go from six to negative eight. So that's negative 14 down over 4. So that's about negative 3.5 meters per second. 
Maybe you say something slightly different because my graph is not perfect. That's totally fine. And right here, you're at rest. There is no slope. Anyways, cool. Um, so the slope is zero meters per second. Great. So now what I do is I go ahead and graph the constant velocity section first. And then I worry about the curve sections where something is speeding up or slowing down. So I'm going to go ahead and label my axes. Um, so I should call this a, I'll do it in a different color. Okay, we'll do it in black. So we'll call this a velocity versus time graph. Cool, and this is just going to be a little sketch. So we'll say zero right here. Looks like, oh, we have only two is the highest we go to, so we'll just do. One, two, three, four, and negative one, two, three, four. So negative four, negative two, positive two, positive four. I should label uh, my axis. So this is velocity meters per second, and this is time in seconds. Cool. So now let's go ahead and graph. So constant speed, so that means it's always staying the same. So if we were to draw that on a graph, always staying the same, it looks like this for that whole entire time interval. So now at five seconds, we know we're at zero meters per second for a second, or an instant, I should say. Going to skip the curve sections for now. This part, so from seven to 11 seconds, we're going negative 3.5 meters per second. So constant speed, whole entire time. And then this last little section, zero meters per second, we are at rest. Perfect, got my beautiful graph. Now let's do the other section. So we're slowing down, but we're still moving in a positive direction. So my velocity should be positive above the x-axis, but it's getting to zero. So I'm just gonna connect like this. And we'll just assume this is a parabola type of um, function right here for your position versus time. So from here, you're moving in a negative direction, so you're getting faster away from zero, but your negative velocity We'll just draw a line right here to connect that. Cool, and we got it. Cool, so now that we've drawn our graph, I kind of like to look over it and make sure things make sense. So it looks like for this whole entire sections right here, you're moving in a positive forward direction. This little part right here, be careful with that. You're moving from two meters per second to rest, but you're still going in a positive direction, as we notice up here. Here, important point, we change direction. And then this part right here, we move in a negative direction, um, speeding up, and then constant speed right here, still in a negative direction. 